Not only do immigrants uh, create more jobs, they also lead to higher real incomes of the individuals who were initially in the country. So Dr. Frank, welcome back to our Geneva studios yet again. It's a pleasure to have you here. And today we're going to be looking at immigration, which is you know, a very hot topic recently, particularly in regards to the United States of America and Europe. And here in Switzerland, the nationalistic Swiss People's Party was successful in a referendum to limit immigration to, uh, immigrants to Switzerland. And the party blamed immigrants for lowering the Swiss, uh, the Swiss citizens' uh, income and also stealing their jobs. What are your thoughts on this? Well, when you talk about immigration, everybody seems to have an opinion. Uh, let me just address some of what I consider to be economic fallacies of what you just said, that immigrants basically lower incomes and steals people's jobs. Uh, if that was true, then the highest populations would have the highest unemployment rates. And we must realize that the U.S. would not be what it is today if it wasn't for the large immigration it had in the 19th century. And uh, when we look at uh, places such as Hong Kong, which has the highest number of individuals per square meter, then according to that logic, we should have the highest unemployment rate. And it doesn't. It has an unemployment rate of 2.3%. Uh, let me explain with a very simple example. Uh, suppose that you had a country that had 100 people making 100 things and you brought in uh, immigrants of 100. So now we have 200 individuals in this country. Does that mean that unemployment rate would be 100? And the answer is no, because not only do these people produce, but they also consume. And because we get the gains from the division of labor, and we have to realize that growth comes from two different sources. They come either from an increase in the capital base or uh, the gains from the division of labor based on comparative advantage. So not only would these additional 100 people create more goods and services, they would actually be end up, we would actually end up producing more than 200 goods and services, which means that not only do immigrants uh, create more jobs, they also lead to higher real incomes of the individuals who were initially in the country, the initial 100. And another argument for immigrants kind, uh, being sort of a burden on a country is uh, that argument that, oh, what about those immigrants that, you know, work in the country, for example, Switzerland, but send their money elsewhere? What do you think about that argument? Yeah, I've heard this argument a lot in, uh, in Geneva here, is that uh, you have people coming from France, working in Geneva, and then spending all their income in France and not really uh, using their purchasing power to uh, aid businesses in Geneva. And that's uh, another economic fallacy. You have to realize is that when you earn a thousand Swiss francs, what is a thousand Swiss francs? It's a claim on Swiss goods and services and nothing else. So for example, if I was to uh, be working here in Geneva and going to France and, for example, purchase a pair of skis, what would happen? I would pay in euros, okay, and my bank would then convert my uh, euros, my Swiss francs actually, into euros for me to make that payment. But how was it able to convert the Swiss francs into euros? It had to find somebody else who was willing to convert euros into Swiss francs. And the reason that person is doing that is because he intends to purchase Swiss goods and services. So the purchasing power isn't actually diluted, it's just transferred from one person to the other. It's basically the essence of what we call an exchange economy. So Dr. Frank, what do you think immigration policy should be then? Well, I think the problem we have in Europe is, uh, is uh, uh, is immigration consistent with the welfare state? Uh, I think it's very important that uh, any immigrants coming into a country respect the property rights of those who are already in the country. So, for example, if we had uh, voluntary organizations, I should say private organizations, which uh, individuals make voluntary contributions instead of the government, which basically taxes everyone, okay, to support immigration immigrants, okay, th there would be less of a problem. But I think it's very important to have an immigration policy that, uh, that respects the property rights of the individuals who are already in the country. Well, Dr. Frank, thank you so much for coming in today and talking about the controversial topic of immigration. Well, thank you for having me.
That's all from myself and Dr. Frank today in the Geneva studios. But if you like this video, there are plenty more on our website, ducascopy.tv.